Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with who, a man who I was first introduced on Drop Dead Diva as an angel. Now he's going into season six uh, with last year's premiere of Essential, or last week's premiere of Essential, and this week, California Part Two. Ben Feldman, how are you today? I'm fine. You know, how good are any of us right now? Well, you did hit 100 episodes on, uh, on Superstore, so congratulations for that. Thank you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was surreal. You know, you... you Normally, in normal times, we would have celebrated that in some sort of a way. It's a farewell to America, uh, a lead character, and uh, a hundredth episode um, mark, which would normally be, yeah, we'd have a giant party. Um, and none of that happened. So thanks, COVID. But uh, we're all really, really excited and, and on the, honored. That well, on the bright side, Lauren said that there will be a cake eventually, like some giant sheet cake for the hundredth episode. It'll read like a hundred plus whatever episodes afterwards. So at Lauren least said, yeah, I think Lauren is the secreting that into existence. I have not heard that, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's, there's always, a, there's a cake for everything. Just like there's a tweet. Um, you guys, you know, I mean, I know the, the catchphrase isn't used the way it used to be, but must see TV for NBC on Thursday nights. Yet you guys are keeping a 40 year tradition of Thursday nights being NBC's night. How does that feel? I mean, there was the Golden Girls, there was Cheers, there was Frasier, Friends, so on and so forth. Uh, last season was the last season of The Good Place, and here you guys are keeping in that in that lineup. Yeah, we're uh, we're cockroaches. We won't we won't die. All those other shows come and go, and we're just somehow we we've, we've been around since the dinosaurs. Um, it's really cool. We actually didn't start on Thursday night. I think we were a Monday or Tuesday show originally. Um, and, you know, NBC has reinvented themselves, or at least their comedy and, and their Thursday nights quite a bit. Um, but it's, as someone who grew up on those shows, and, and, and that's, that's wholly sacred territory to me, uh, it is not lost on me that I'm, I'm on NBC on a, on a Thursday night. It's really cool. And last year, for, for a couple of years, I was on NBC on a Thursday night with Ted Danson. I mean, not at the same time, but it was, uh, it was a, a cool little throwback. Right. And I mean, that's a huge tie in, you know, I mean, Ted going back to the 80s with Cheers and then The Good Place and then you guys being a part of that is, is a huge deal. Uh, yeah. 100 episodes is also a big deal. And I asked Lauren, um, there was one guy, so she's in the Shira, she's one of the voices of the Shira characters. There was mm -hmm. one guy on Instagram who superimposed Skeletor in all his vacation photos to see if his wife ever noticed and she hadn't. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys have any Easter eggs on the series after 100 episodes where there's like a certain roll of toilet paper or a certain broom or whatever that has to be in, ver in every single episode at this point? There's not, I don't think there's anything we have that's consistently in every single episode, but there are, there are always, there's so many that it's, it's impossible for me to even remember. Like there's, if, if, if I took you around set right now, I'd be like, there's, you know, like there's the cardboard cutout of um, the cloud. There was like a cloud character uh, from, uh, you know, three or four seasons ago. And there's, there's little things here and there that, that remain or that never change. Um, I think Nicole's character, Cheyenne, is always looking for a scrunchie and has been since season one, one particular green scrunchie. So there's certainly, you are rewarded for longevity as a viewer uh, with our show as well. Um, I asked Lauren this because she mentioned that on Reddit, there are threads where people are trying to figure out everybody's schedule because they have the time clocks, try to do, draw their own schematics of how the store would look depending where products are. Um, Superstore has that level of fan base and dedication almost to Trekkie levels. So if there is a Superstore convention at some point, what <sighs> real life Superstore should host the Cloud Nine convention. What actual store? What actual store? Um, let's see. I mean, the only one that we really name dropped on a bigger level on our show is Target, um, and I would imagine that would be. I mean, it would. It's tough because we're 
we're a store, you know, if you walk around our set, you'll find super cheap stuff that you'd see in like a 99 cent store, but then occasionally something that you would see in like a sharper image, uh, or does that still exist? Fancy gadgets and stuff like that. So I wonder who that would actually be. I mean, I imagine we're, gosh, I mean, we would have to be Target just because I feel like they're our bros. <laughs> <laughs> but as someone who, you know, just goes about my daily life and meets people um, in, in real life who are fans, the show connects with really anybody in the retail industry. I, I can go to a Best Buy or a Target or a Walmart and people will be like, oh my God, your show is about me. The same way I could go to a Whole Foods or an Erewhon or some super obnoxious upmarket, you know, vegan, macrobiotic, whatever. The person at the register is still like, oh my God, you're, I, that's my life. You are me in, in my life. So uh, we connect with a lot of people. Well, the show's always been fun and there's some great one-liners in there. Um, you know, my, Mark, obviously from Kids in the Hall back in the day, which I grew up watching, uh, just his movement enough is to make me laugh. What's it like to have this level of ensemble cast and to sit there and everyone still gets a funny line? Like nobody's a throwaway. Nobody is just there um, for inclusion's sake. It's just funny and fun on our end. I don't know what it is recording for you guys, though. Oh, it's insanely fun. It's just slightly less fun this year because you don't get, because of all the restrictions, you don't get to mess around as much as we used to. But um, improv is a, is a very, it's a, it's a major part of our process. So there's just a lot of people saying a lot of ridiculous stuff. It's a tremendously funny group in general. So off camera, it's just, you, you know, just imagine every day going to work with your like six to 10 funniest friends. And that's kind of what it's like. Mark is, and everybody's funny in a very different way. Um, you know, Nico's kind of got some sass to him. Nicole's got this kind of airy vibe. Um, Lauren's a really tight, strong, like, like aggressive improv. Mark is like, Mark is like a really goofy nerd. Um, and he brings that energy. Uh, but yeah, it's also, we're constantly reminded that Mark is, is a, is a comedy God. And especially when we have someone from the state on to like, we had a director who was on the state. We had David Wayne on the show a couple times who's from the state. That was my kids in the hall on the state were my two sort of improv ensemble sketch shows that I grew up on. And so when they're both there, my head explodes. So it sounds like you're having a good time and everybody yeah. you admired has now become your coworker. Yeah, it's great. And then we get to bring in funny people. Like there was an episode last season where I was like, this is a pretty big part. I wonder if we could get Fred Armisen to do it. And we reach, reached out to Fred and Fred came in and it was like another comedy hero of mine to be there. We, we get to work with, it's just a really group of funny people. It feels like, you know, one of those college houses where the like door is always open and there's a giant porch and there's just a, a constant parade of, of the funny theater dorks coming in and out uh, every single day. Well, this Thursday is the 100th episode, and unfortunately, we get to say goodbye to America, um, who's been a huge part of the show. So we're going to find out next week how that void begins to be filled, uh, even though you can't really replace her. Um, but you know what's going on, and with no spoilers, how, how does something like when you remove a lead character or a character that's been such a major piece in the puzzle is taken out, how does the dynamic of, of the series change? We're lucky because first and foremost, we're an ensemble show. When I, when I uh, signed on to do this 85,000 years ago, I had said to, the, um, to the, the writer, creator, Justin Spitzer, was like, I just came out of an NBC show where the entire sort of storyline and narrative was propped up on the shoulders of me and uh, this uh, Chris Miliati, who was like my love interest. Um, and everybody else kind of fell to the wayside more like they supported these characters by being the funny, you know, support system around them, propping them up. And uh, what convinced me to do this show is that it's it's an ensemble, and I don't think this show falls apart if you take um, any one of us away. You know, like my, my son just got for his birthday the other day this little thing that's like a pirate, and you keep pulling swords out until one sword makes the pirate, like, explode. And I don't think the pirate explodes on this show. You can keep pulling out as many swords as you want. Um, America was incredible, and uh, you can't fill that void. You can only uh, step up and make sure that everybody else is getting equal attention, 
um, and bring as much energy as you can. And fortunately for me, uh, I think, I think in a really, really weird way, COVID has provided a, a large amount of that uh, energy that, that we, that we could have used this, this season. You know, there, there's, it's sad that America's gone, but there's a lot other stuff. There's, there's racial injustice, there's um, political, you know, there's, there's, there's discourse and, 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 all these different crazy things happening. So we just keep, we just keep moving. Yeah. Well, we need the funny and we need, we need a chance to laugh. I'm going to throw out a fan theory for you right now, though. Okay. Jeez. Oh, uh, there's a fan, fan th- We got to have a little bit of fun in, in these trying oh, the times. Fans have fun. The fans yeah. have fun. Well, this is my fan theory. Oh, this is your yeah. fan. This theory. is my okay. fan theory. All right. Now that Amy's gone to California, uh, and we don't fully know if Jonah's going to go or not, if he doesn't go, he breaks down and turns back to a carnivorous diet and gives up all his veganism and woke aspects for at least two to three weeks of season six. All of his veganism and woke aspects and just becomes sort of this brutish, like, Just bro. total, yeah, like uh, a beta male who thinks he's an alpha. Like, the, like those toxic, when you hear toxic masculinity, it's the beta males who think they're alphas, not actual alphas. So he turns into one of those. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're running the country. Um, I love that idea. I wish you were in the writer's room. Uh, we don't get a new Jonah. Um, we, get a, we get an affected Jonah. Uh, but boy, I would kill to play that guy. Um, Maybe I'll pitch it for some sort of alternate uh, universe episode one day. <laughs> Maybe that'll be next year's Halloween episode. <laughs> there you go. Jo- Jonah turns into a full bro Halloween he- 2021. Last Halloween, uh, I, tr- Jonah tried to go as... Oh, no, no. Jonah went as a, a cowboy, and Dina thought that he was going as toxic masculinity. And he was like, oh, that's good. Maybe I'm going to switch to that. Um, but he never really leaned into it. So yeah, I think I think that's something that we have yet to explore. But I'm I'm 100 percent for it. Well, it sounds it sounds like it would be fun. You know, so long as I get a wink at the camera, knowing that it was my idea, we're good to go. You'll get a giant. In fact, we'll, we'll, when we shoot that episode, I'll make sure to wink directly in the lens every single scene. <laughs> there we go. Uh, your kid, uh, you know, you just mentioned your son has has this new pirate toy. Um, is he old enough to make that distinction between daddy on TV versus daddy in real life? And if he isn't, has he seen you like put something back on the shelf at one of these superstores and going, your stocking get wrong? <laughs> he, he has not really watched the show. So he, he knows that daddy goes to work um, and he's been to work. It's been a long time because now no one's allowed to come, but he's been there uh, and he knows that there's cameras and then he has to be quiet when at a certain point. Um, but I don't know how much he, under, and a lot of my friends with kids who are actors who have kids this age, I, it's, there's the, those circuits don't fully connect in his brain. In fact, the other day we were watching something, uh, and he was talking about what was in the TV and he said, daddy, one day you can go in the TV. And I thought that was adorable. Um, obviously I said, you know, you stupid idiot. I am already in the TV. God, I, I don't understand how I could have created someone so so ignorant um i did not say that but i I did say yeah hopefully one day daddy will be in the tv and and you'll you'll get to see him i don't know that he'll be watching superstore anytime soon but i am recording or have recorded all of uh the monsters inc they made monsters inc into a disney plus uh show um and when that finally starts to air hopefully i've been prepping him i've been like one day charlie you're gonna see a cartoon but daddy's voice is gonna be in the cartoon so we'll see how much he gets it nice yeah so you're working for the mouse and for woody woodpecker at this point with the nbc universal crossovers and disney i i got i got yeah i got my 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 i my first and my second wife right now um it's fun the the cartoon is going to take a really long time uh but it's they're really they're they're treating it with movie level uh, precision. So it's, it's the, the animation is incredible. Um, it's up there with like the, it's, it's better than any normal uh, cartoon that you would see. And everybody's in it. It's Billy Crystal and John Goodman, Minnie Kaling's in it. Um, it's great. It's really, you know, and I can't wait for everybody to see that in 2070. Now, 
season six is in full swing right now. And going back to season one, when you saw that it was an ensemble cast and everything going from there, um, and you've actually visited stores and whatever else, how much more have you become a mindful shopper in those last six years where instead of like, oh, I'll just put this on the shelf over here and someone will take care of it, to actually go back three aisles and return an item that you no longer wanted? That's funny that you say that. I actually had that, that moment probably last week. I remember grabbing something, starting to put it back wherever I had ended up and being like, no, man, come on, come on. You are these people now. You get it. You get how annoying that is. Um, so yeah, I am more mindful, but that said, I go to stores less. We don't, my, our front porch is just a collection of boxes that my, my wife has, has had sent here. Um, so I don't get that opportunity. Usually now if I'm picking something up, it's at the grocery store. Uh, anything else we, we have, we had a playground, like a, a actual playground shipped here and, and, you know, everything that, that defines Charlie and Effie's lives, my kids' lives, is all stuff that came in a box that said Amazon on it. So who even knows what it's like to be in a store anymore? Right. And then you find out that Charlie enjoyed the boxes more than he did the playset. Effie is now that age. Yeah, they, they remember. Yeah, yeah. When Charlie, oh, yeah. For a while, it was just trash. It was, it was recycling. It was trash of the recycling uh, uh, persuasion that they enjoyed most. Ben, I know we're running out of time, so I, I want to close with this. Um, what can we expect or hope to expect for Jonah as season six progresses? And after you tell us that, where can we find you on social media to connect? Jonah uh, is re-evaluating his life. I mean, he, you know, he, had, he, he committed himself to a cause that ultimately went nowhere last year uh, on a sort of political, charitable level. Um, and he also committed himself to a cause in a romantic way that ultimately went nowhere too. So he's, 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 you know, back at a starting point and, or a crossroads maybe, and trying to figure out what defines him. What is he here for? Is this job really what he wants to be doing? Uh, who does he want to be with? Um, what kind of a person is he? And so that's, that's what's happening uh, this season for him. And it's, I mean, he's always a searcher, but he's, he's searching extra hard right now. Um, and were you to want to find me on the Soch, uh, it's Ben M. Feldman on both Instagram and Twitter. It used to be who's Ben Feldman, like who is on Twitter, but you know, NBC, they wanted me to match my, my, uh, handles. And so now it's Ben M. Feldman. M's for Mitchell. Perfect. Now, don't give us a social security number while you're at it. You know, you give us your full name. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't give you my full... Oh, yeah, I did. I said Mitchell. Um, no, I'll give you... I, you know what? Why not? My social security <laughs> number... No, that's, that, that's just for... I be, you know what? I'm at an age where I'm now forgetting that, and it gives me panic attacks. Every once in a while, they'll be like, and your last four on your social? And I'll be like, uh, oh, God. Oh, it's already happening. The dementia's coming, so... It's not far away from me. Ben Feldman, thank you so much for your time. Jonah on Superstore. Superstore airs on NBC Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, congratulations on 100 episodes, and here's to 100 more. Thank you so much. It was good to talk to you. Good talking to you, too.